Hey guys, welcome to the sixth and final video in this Django series. So in the last video, we built a simple word dictionary using Django. And in this video, we're going to deploy that dictionary to the web. So once we are done, we're going to have a URL or a link that can be used to actually access the dictionary that we've built. So we're going to use Linode to host this dictionary online. And Linode offers a 60 day $100 credit that you can use to follow along with this series. So you can check the link in the description below to sign up for that. And once you sign up for that, you can move forward with this video. So now that we've been able to create our application successfully, the next thing we want to do is to actually deploy this application on the web so that we can have like a URL or a link that anyone in the world can use to view it. So what we just need to do is to go into Linode. So we're going to be using Linode to actually deploy this Django application or host it on the web. So make sure that you have a Linode account. What you just need to do is to go to cloud.linode.com just like this and hit enter. So you, there is a link in the description below where you can get $100 free credit for 60 days for free. Linode offers that. So if you sign up with the link in the description below, you will get that for free. And once you've logged in, you're going to see this dashboard. You might not have anything here, but what we want to do is to come into this marketplace. So what we're going to do now is that we are going to create a new Django app. So Linode offers this Django one click app that basically allows us to just, you know, create a, a cloud and have Django pre-installed on it. So it's basically going to install like a new project on Django and all the dependencies and requirements we need to run a Django project. So now that we uh, we are here, what we just need to do is to click on Django. Once you've clicked on Django, you just scroll down to where you see Django user. So here in Django user, what you just need to do is to input a name. So I'm just going to input my name and it's going to ask for a password. So you're just going to input a password and it's also going to ask for a, an email. So I'm just going to input my email. So once you have these details, you can scroll down to where you see select an image. So I think for now, it, this is the only image available, but that is all right because that's what we actually need. And the next thing you want to scroll to is this region. So you either select the particular region you are in or any region that is closest to you. If you are not sure what to select, just use this speed test page and it's going to tell you what, you know, region you should use or what region is best for your current location. So now we're just going to click on London, UK, and then we're going to scroll down to where we see the note plan. So there are various plans here. There is dedicated CPU. The cheaper one is also shared GP CPU. So I'm just going to come on that shared CPU and I'm going to click Linode 2 gig. So this gives us 2 gig of RAM and 50 gig of storage, which is more than enough for what we want to do. So now we're going to scroll down and just leave the rest the way it is. Leave this like this. And it's going to ask for a root password. So this root password is important because when we try to SSH into this particular cloud on our local computer, we need this particular password. So what we're going to do is to say, write a password there and just leave the rest blank. We're going to talk about this SSH later in a bit, but now we just want to create Linode. So this is going to take about one to two minutes to actually create. So it's going to take a, like a few minutes to provision. And once it has created, you see something here that says running. So once that is done, I'm going to be back. So as you can see right here now, it says running. So this has been provisioned successfully. The next thing that we want to do is to actually SSH into this cloud. So first of all, you can see that it gives us some details, some connection details. It gives us this IP address. So this IP address is actually going to be the link or the host URL that is going to be hosting our project. So when we are done hosting, this URL is where we're going to go into to see our project. So now to SSH into this server, what we're going to do is to just copy this code right here, come here into our terminal. So if you're on a Windows, just open your command prompt and then paste that code and hit enter. So it says, are we sure we want to continue? We'll say yes, hit enter. So it asks for the password. So now remember when we are creating a password that I said is going to be useful, input that password in here. The password is going to be invisible, so just tick enter. So once you see something like this, that has been, we've, we've gone into the server successfully. So now once we are here, what we can actually do is to, first of all, install Git. I'm going to tell you why we're installing Git in a bit. But to install Git, what we need to do is to just say apt get install git. So this is going to install git for us. We'll say yes, it asks for 38 megabytes of storage and we have more than that. So once we say yes, it should install that for us. 
So done, that is installed. Now let me explain the process of what we want to do. So right now, Django has actually created a simple Django app or simple Django project in this particular server. For us to test and actually see that Django created it, let's take this particular URL, this particular IP address. Let's open an incognito tab and let's go into the address. So it's going to say this site can be reached. But once we see port 8000, because we know that's what Django runs on, then you can see that it says this install works successfully, which is the default Django template when you create a new project. So if you've been working with Django or from this series, you know that when you create a new project, this is what you see. So basically Django has created this for us on the cloud. But what we want to do now is that that basically we want to replace or push our own code, what we've been building into the code of this particular project so that it runs our code. So it's basically what we're going to do now is that we're going to create a new repository and then we're going to push this project onto that repository. Then once we push the project, we're going to update that particular repo repository with this code, our own source code. And then we're going to pull it back here and that is just going to have the code for this R project. So we've been able to deploy this project successfully. Now, let me walk you through the steps. So since we know that we already have Git installed, the next thing we want to do is to actually create a repository on GitHub. So I'm going to come into my Chrome and I'm going to say GitHub. So right here in GitHub, I'm going to come into this plus sign and say new repository. So let me just say something like Django Linode deployment. And then I'm going to scroll down and just say uh, it must be public. And I'm going to say create repository. So once I have this done, it gives me all this code. This is good. But before we actually use this, we need one more thing, which is the SSH key. So right here, I'm just going to click on settings. I'm going to open that in a new tab. And I'm going to scroll down to where we have developer settings and personal access tokens. So let me explain why we actually need this. So in here, when we are trying to create a new repository or push some code to a repository, we need that SSH key as like a password that authenticates us because we don't want anyone to just be able to push any code into our GitHub repository. So because once we have this particular token, it's going to give us the access to be able to like push any code to our repository on this my account. So now you have to create a new token by clicking generate new token. It just asks us that I should use my SMS. It wants to verify, but what I can just do is to just use password instead. And we're just going to input password and click enter. Okay, so this is so that has been done successfully. And now let's just say the note of this token and let's just say something like Linode deployment, something like that. And then you can set it to expire 30 days or whenever, or you can also set it to never expire. I'm just going to leave it at 30 days. And right here in scopes, so this is just giving it like what can you actually do when you have this token. So we want to be able to access all the repo. So private repo, anything public repo, we want to be able to access it. You can do that by just clicking on this repo. It's going to automatically select all of this. Now you can leave the rest and just scroll down and click on generate token. Once you generate token, you need to have this particular token copied because once you go away from this page, it's never going to show you that token again. So you're going to have to create a new one. So make sure you have this copied and then we're going to move forward with the next step. So now that we've created that SSH key, we can now actually go into this terminal and I want to show you the Django project or the source code or the files for that Django project that is running right here. So for me to show you this, we need to go into, so I'm going to say CD var slash www. So we have to say CD slash var. So now once we say CD slash var slash www, if I say LS, you're going to see that we have a folder named Django app. Now in this folder, let me go into this folder. I'm in there. Now, once I say ls again, you can now see that we have this default Django files with the SQLite, the Django app, and manage.py. So once you know we have this, you know that, yes, this is actually a Django source code. But what we want to do now is that this particular repository that we created, we want to push that code in here. So I'm going to copy all of this. And this code, all this, the source code for this file, I'm going to push it into that repository. So what I just need to do is to paste it. So what it has done is that it ran all those code I created. So all of this code, it ran them one by one. And the, for the last code, which is push, I'm just going to hit enter. 
it asks for my password. No, it first asks for my username. And the username is Tommy Toko, which is my GitHub username. Then now the password is actually that password I said we must copy. So just come back here and copy it. So this is not your GitHub password. This is like the token we created. So hit enter and boom. You can see that that has been pushed successfully. Let's come back in here and actually see what that is. So you can see now that it doesn't show just this again. It now shows that some files have been pushed. But immediately you see that we add these three files. Where is it? If I do ls, we add these three files. We added a readme file, but only the readme file was pushed. Now this is just because we didn't do git add. So once you do git add with a full stop, it adds all the files. Then we just need to commit it. So commit main. And let's just say first commit. Good. So it shows all the changes. Then now let's just say push. Ask for the username the password, and then it pushes it. So now if I come back in here and hit refresh, you should see that that has been pushed successfully. So now that this has been pushed in here, what we just want to do is that we don't actually need these files because this is just a normal Django like template. What we actually want to do is to push this, our code here into this particular repository. So we're basically replacing our code. We're basically replacing this with our code. So this particular project that we were building, we're going to push it onto this repository. Now there are various ways we can do this. We can either do it from the command line by, you know, accessing this particular repository and pushing it. But GitHub actually has a new way of allowing us to convert a GitHub repository into a VS Code type system. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So let me copy this code, this link. If I come in here and say github.dev, you're going to see that it is going to open that GitHub repository, but in an online VS Code editor. This is very good because it allows us to just like edit the files and do everything we need to do from a VS Code, you know, app, but online. So once I just do GitHub.dev on any particular repository, it allows me to edit all the files. So this is what I need now. What I can just do, I don't need these files. I can get rid of these files and just bring my own file in here. So I'm going to do that now. So let's just say, let's remove this. We're going to leave the readme file. We're going to right click and just say delete permanently. We don't need that. Then what we just want to do is that we want to drag all of these files in there. So I'm going to go into my finder on my Mac. And this is all the files of this particular project. So I'm going to drag all of it from here and just paste it in the VS Code online. So this is actually a quicker way of, you know, pushing your code into your your repository. So that has been done. Now what we can just do is to push these changes because it's going to commit it for us and push it automatically. So we don't need to do anything from the command line, which is very straightforward. So what I'm going to do is to first of all, make sure that this particular URL is added as an host. So let me copy this URL or this IP address. And I'm going to come in here and where I see demo project, I'm going to go into settings. You're going to see where we see allowed host. So in here, let's remove that star and just say this IP address. So we must make sure that this IP address is allowed as an host. If not, it's not going to allow us to host this Django project on that IP address. So now that we know we have that, what we just want to do is to actually come down here and click on this button. So once we click on that, we want to go into this source control icon. So it has seen all the changes we've made. We deleted the one we don't need and then we just added the code of our own project. So what we're going to do now, let's just say final code. So we're committing final code. And once I click on this check button, it's actually going to commit all of that for us and not just commit it. It's also going to push it to that repository. But this only works when I am logged in as the owner of that repo. So it knows that I am logged in as Tommy Toko. That's why it allows me to change it. If I come back in here and hit refresh, you'll see that everything has been changed. So right here, as you can see, everything has been changed. So the next thing we need to do now is to come into our terminal. And what we're just going to do is to do git pull. So what this is saying is because I actually SSH out of this server and going back in. So what we need to do is to do cd slash var slash www. So now once you do ls, Let's go into Django app. 
Django app again. So let's do ls. So we have all of this. Let's clear that. So what we need to do now is to do git pull. So what this git pull is doing is that it is actually pulling the latest or the current repository back into that particular file. So whatever was there, it replaced it with the code. So if I click on ls, you're going to see now that it has all of this, which is what we want to happen. So what we can now do now, if we go into this URL right here, so let's copy this, open that incognito tab again, and paste it. It doesn't work. So first of all, we need to make sure we're in 8,000, but that still doesn't work. So this doesn't work because what we need to do, first of all, let's test this out. We can test this out by just saying Python 3 manage.py run server. So you can see that it says module not found py dictionary. So what we just need to do is we just manually in install py dictionary. So we just copy that and just say pip free install py dictionary. So normally, let's say you have a large project that has a lot of you know packages that you're using. You are meant to have a requirement.txt file. Then you use that to install all your packages. But since this is just the only package we need, we can just install that manually. So once that is installed, we can actually run Python 3 manage.py run server. So it is running on this particular port, but this is not where we want it to run on. So if I cut out of that server, I actually want it to run on this, not this. So I'm going to go back to get the IP address. So I want it to run on this particular IP address. So I'm just going to do this, paste. And once I do that, but 8000. So once I do that, it's going to run on that IP address port 8000. So I'm going to come in here now once I hit refresh. You can see that the app is now working successfully. Let's say I hit slash dictionary. You can see now, let's say I say America. And hit search. You can see that that is working successfully. So this is working successfully, but there's one more thing we need to do. If I come in here now and let's say I just cut out of this server and I come back in here and hit refresh. So let me just come back. You can see that that is not working anymore. Now this is because that is only running or is only allowing it to be available when we run it right here. But that is not where we want to happen. We want that we are able to host our website on the web so that even when let's say I close down this computer or I get out of this terminal, it should still be running. Now this is very easy. What we just need to do Let's actually copy this code, this command line, because we will still use it. So we need to type something called no hop. So this no hop allows us, allows the command to keep running in the cloud. So we're going to paste this and you must add this particular and sign. Once you add that and hit enter, no matter what, if I come back in here now, you're going to see that that is running. Even if I cut out of the server by doing control C, you can see I'm no more running that command. If I come back in here, you can see that that is still running. So that particular command allows our app to be running on the cloud. So even when we stop, you know, all this process that we're doing, it is still running. Except we want to stop running it, then we can stop running it. So that is how to basically do that. So even if I quit this particular terminal, that is still going to keep running. So now a user can just come into this particular link or this URL and see the app that we've been building. So I can even also go to slash admin. And, you know, access the admin database right here. So let me just search for something and say laptop, or well, let me say computer. So this is working perfectly. So this is actually how to build and deploy a simple web app only node. So guys, that is the end of this Django series. I hope you now understand how to build your own projects with Django. So thank you for watching all the way to this point. And don't forget to drop in the comments whatever video you want us to cover next. So having that said, thanks again for watching and bye for now.